It's Monday, June 25th, 2024, and it is about 12.30 in the afternoon, and I just came here with one of my helpers earlier to, we just wanted to get a start on these rafters, and that's what we did. I'm going to go over this process right here, and then my metal guy was here. He got the splice plates up. Um, I helped him with that and he was going to weld, start welding these posts to the beams and he offered to come back while we are framing rafters in case we need to bump this beam back or forth a little bit to keep it parallel to the ridge beam, which is great. Uh, that's going to help us a lot while we're doing rafters and so not too much got done, but it was still a good day i wasn't expecting to get too much done to be honest but he does need to uh, adjust two of the holes on this one you can see there's only six of the bolts are in we did fit all eight of the bolts in that splice plate and so tomorrow he's going to come back here and meet us first thing in the morning and we're going to He's gonna finish those. He, uh, the hardware company shorted him on some nuts anyway, so he's gotta go back there, get a few extra nuts, and we're gonna put a uh, L bracket right up there against, we're gonna put it against the wall to help hold this beam upright while we're framing rafters. And that's only necessary until we get the rafter ties in because then everything is braced together there's no outward force on that beam uh, with the weight of the rafters landing on it once you put that rafter tie in it's solid and you don't have to worry about that outward force but we are a little worried about that in the meantime so this i want to go over that process what i did over there so first thing we did today was figure out what our rise and run for this new rafter in the front is now i use this line that i had done this line is from when we laid out the holes for the anchors and there could be some misalignment up there with the way you got that big post on top and the beam on top of that you know theoretically it would be right above the line we snapped but it never quite works out that way but we had this mark here from figuring out that line this is the back of the ridge board went over an inch and three quarters this should be the front of the ridge board and then we came over here and used our laser. I did not have a plumb bottom. I have like 10 plumb bobs at my house and I don't have any in my truck. I tore my whole truck apart today, but we had to use the laser, which sucks in this bright light. But we snapped our laser line from the front edge of the metal beam right down to here. Then we measured square off uh, this wall and then we measured over to get our our run that measurement came out to 188 and one quarter inch then we used the the laser with the red with the laser sensor and we put the, the mark for the sensor right at the top of that two by eight up there. And then we got our laser mounted up here. And then we transcribed that line with a mark onto this wall under that ridge beam. And then I measured from the top of that ridge beam or the ridge board, the LVL ridge board to my mark. And I got 109 and a half. So this these two measurements represent a rise and run, but not overall. I'm gonna explain this. But these two measurements were what I needed 
to draw this on the floor. So we snap the line. This line over here represents our run. So this is the peak of the, this is the middle of the building. Snap one line to start. Then we did a three, four, five triangle to get our perpendicular line to that. So I measured, I got a mark here. That's three inches. It's hard to see. I didn't want to use paint too much on the asphalt, but that's our three inch mark. I mean, three foot. This is our four foot leg. Put a tiny little mark there. That's all we needed for now. And then we got five feet from the two marks. So that's how you make a perpendicular line snap another line that represents our run so our measurement 188 and one quarter inches is the equivalent of this to this position now that's our oh, that's our bird's foot for that is what sits on top of the beam and so then obviously the, the rise is the same idea. Marked 109 and a half inches up here, put our mark, wind up our board, and then did the best we could to transfer those marks with a framing square, just kind of eyeballing it, trying to get it right on top and then tracing it with a pencil. So, you know, there's plenty of rafter videos out there. If you guys want to learn how to cut rafters, I'm not really trying to teach it right now, but this is a pretty cool method. This is not the only way to do it. Um, so, what I decided was that to finish this building off, what we're doing is, this is our fascia board here. Uh, the gutter is going to be installed on the front of this. This is in line with the bottom packing on that beam. So then to finish it off, we're going to have the, the beam is going to be here. And we're going to uh, put plywood right across. So that's how it's going to get finished off. Nice and simple. No extra angles that we don't need. Um, so yeah, this was our first cut at it. We got it up there and the only thing that's off is we are half an inch off over here. So if we have that bird's foot resting on top of the beam and this wants to rest like an inch and a half below the top of the ridge board so if we pick it up and align this top edge to the top corner of the ridge board there was about a half inch gap right there that we need to address and fix so this was just our test board and we're going to redo it with you know we're going to make it half an inch longer right there and see how that fits and tomorrow we're coming with a bunch of guys so it'll be a lot easier to mess around and so then the, i guess the plan tomorrow when we have more guys to help with this because it's pretty hard getting that rafter up there with two guys very awkward on the ladders uh, we'll have some some people up on the roof and we'll have a couple more spots with ladders and we're going to take that we're pretty, you know, we'll test it there, but we are already pretty sure it's gonna fit there because that's what, uh, that's where we tested this one and saw what was wrong with it. But then we're gonna take that template. Well, it might be a template. We're gonna take that first drafter and we're gonna test it out in all the different spots, um, particularly where the beams meet. So then we can have them, our metal guy We'll shift the 
beam over a little bit where we need to and then he can start welding those so yeah that's the plan for tomorrow um now i really want to get those rafter ties installed at the same time as the rafters but the hardware i need to screw those off is getting delivered to my house tomorrow so i mean we could probably just tack it up with some some construction screws temporarily but there is a uh, spec on our plan for what type of hardware we need to secure those rafter ties in but anyway that's it it was a nice easy day today i'm pretty happy with the the way our rafter is coming out and I'm really hoping it fits in a lot of places so that's it. I will be back tomorrow and have a good one. So it's Friday, June 28th, 2024. And we actually didn't come to work yesterday because we thought it was going to be a wash and it turned out to be a beautiful day. But we came here Wednesday and I forgot, well, I didn't forget to film a video, but I left before my guys did and I don't like to film while they're working so on Wednesday we got about a third of the rafters up and right now these are just screwed off in the bracket at the top they are not screwed on the bottom so once we get these up top we're gonna go back and straighten them all out I don't know if we have to do blocking here we might have to block these off but we'll uh, space them evenly on the bottom and screw them off on the bottom and put the hurricane clips on but uh, we just finished getting that last 24 foot 14 inch LVL ridge board in and we're gonna keep going on these rafters and then then we'll start doing rafter ties so the rafter tie which is basically acting as a ceiling joist as well is going to be 14 foot 8 inches above the ground here and if I'm not mistaken, these old joists are at about 11 feet, I think. So we're, we're going up three or four feet above those. I forget exactly how high these are. They look about 11 feet. No, I, wanted, I was thinking 12, but they don't look that high. So anyway, we, uh, we're making good progress here. I know it has seemed like not much has happened. You couldn't really see the progress when we were working on top of those posts and getting this beam up, but it was a lot of prep work with all those anchors and the metal work, but now it's starting to look like something's getting done. So it's actually pretty exciting and uh, yeah, it's going well. So. I will be back at the end of the day, hopefully, and I'll give you a little update then. And we'll see you later. So it's the end of Friday, June 28th, 2024. So I guess that's the week, the end of week eight on this job. And finally some visible progress. We have, mo we have two rafters left to put on this side of the truss we're installing. And we got all of them. We're using these slopable rafter hangers up top so they're all screwed into the ridge board. We started putting some of the hurricane ties down here and spacing the rafters properly. So, these ones are all good over here. And 
it's a big difference with these rafters in. So next week we're going to start putting the rafter ties and I'm going to start building that truss. I don't think I talked about this yet in my video, but the lumber yard never ordered my column caps for this truss we're building. I'll go over to the plan in a second and show you, but we've got all these LVL boards that make up the truss we're building. And then I have a, a six by six post over there on top of the plywood on the right. And so we, we build up this truss and then that post goes under the ridge beam which is that 20 inch LVL, triple 20. So these Simpson brackets are very specific and there's a million different kinds. And when I placed my order, I guess I didn't properly specify exactly which one I, I needed and my sales rep just sent all the lumber without giving me the brackets but it's these, this, and this are a Simpson CC column cap. And then over here says provide Simpson masonry beam hanger. And so I called up Simpson strong drive and she gave me, the lady I talked to gave me this part number here that H equals 20 is referring to the height, but we actually ordered a 16 inch. And these things, this thing is gonna get screwed into the masonry uh, wall right at the ridge, all the way down there, right under where the beam goes in. And the end of the beam rests on top of this bracket which is screwed to the wall so there's no positive pressure down there's not like a, a metal post under it it's literally just suspending off the side of the cinder block wall so i was kind of surprised by that but anyway they make them to order when you order one so we're not getting those till the end of next week maybe even the week after because we have fourth of july coming up but uh we do have enough work to keep us busy next week and we're gonna be building this truss. Since I don't have those caps, I might just kind of use some other boards to brace it all together temporarily so we can at least get it up into place. And we'll just have to wait until those column caps come in to put the uh, six by six vertical post. But Anyway, we're going to be doing rafter ties next week, column or uh, collar ties. Now we're reusing those two by fours for the collar ties up top. So um, we'll just take those off and move them. But I'm really debating when I'm going to take this temporary wall down. And I'd kind of like to leave it up till the framing inspection's done, but I don't even know if the building department's okay with that or what because uh you know the framing's not really doing its job and under the load it's going to be in until that temporary wall comes out so anyway it was a good week we uh missed a day yesterday thought it was going to rain but didn't and that's okay because we're kind of just stalling right now waiting for the hardware to come in but Anyway, I'll be back next week and have a good one. Good night.